In this lesson, we'll examine the frequently tested concept of subject-verb agreement. The basic principle here is that singular subjects must have singular verbs, and plural subjects must have plural verbs. Consider this example. Here the subject brothers is a singular noun, so it takes the singular verb enjoys. Conversely, in the sense, my brothers enjoy cake, the subject brothers is plural, so it takes the plural verb enjoy. Similarly, in this sense, the singular subject, Oscar, matches the singular verb, plays. And here, the plural subject, Burton Ernie, matches the plural verb, play. So in order to ensure subject-verb agreement, be sure to locate the verb in a sense, and then confirm that it agrees with the intended number of the subject. Okay, let's try some examples, beginning with this one. Now you may find it useful to pause the video at various times throughout this lesson, so you can try each question before I provide the solution. Alright, to help us determine the correct answer here, let's eliminate some fluff. Here the prepositional phrase, of the pounding waves, functions as an adjective, modifying the noun, rhythm. As such, we can eliminate it. From here, we can see that the subject of the sentence is rhythm. Since the word rhythm is singular, it must take a singular verb. As such, the correct verb here must be the singular verb is, as in, the rhythm of the pounding waves is calming. Okay, here's another sentence to consider. Now to begin, we could eliminate the prepositional phrase from the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. However, this leaves us with a somewhat confusing sense. So another way to approach this question is to first identify the verb in the sense. Well, the verb here is either come or comes, so the subject will be the noun that performs this action. Well, we know that water and soil are the nouns that are coming, so the subject here is the water and the soil. Since this subject is plural, we need a plural verb to accompany it. In other words, we need the verb come, as in, from the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, come the freshest water and the richest soil. Now for some people, this sentence will still sound wrong. The reason for this lies in the unfamiliar structure of the sentence. In most sentences, the subject appears before the verb. In this sense, the subject appears after the verb. In situations such as this, where the subject appears after the verb, it's sometimes useful to reverse the order of the words. When we do this, we get the freshest water and the richest soil come or comes from the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. From here, we can see that the subject is the freshest water and the richest soil. Since this subject is plural, the verb must be plural as well. So the correct verb here must be come. Okay, moving along, what about this sense? Well, at first glance, it seems like a plural verb is required here, since the subject appears to be plural. However, the subject in this sense is not the leaking roof and the broken windows. Here's why. In this sense, the words in addition to the broken windows is an additive phrase, and additive phrases have no effect on whether a subject is singular or plural. In fact, we can ignore additive phrases altogether when determining the appropriate verb. So when we ignore the additive phrase here, we see that the subject is the roof. Since this is a singular subject, we need the singular verb has to give us the correct sentence, the leaking roof, in addition to the broken windows, has made the house difficult to sell. Now compare that sentence to this one. The leaking roof and the broken windows have made the house difficult to sell. Here the word and creates the plural subject, the leaking roof, and the broken windows. As such, we need the plural verb have here. So the big takeaway here is that the word and creates a plural subject, but an additive phrase has no effect on whether the subject is plural or singular. As we have seen, one family of additive phrases begins with the words in addition to. Some more additive phrases to remember include these. So, for example, the sentence, George's many talents, together with his charm, make him very popular, is grammatically correct. Because when we ignore the additive phrase, together with his charm, we can see that the subject of this sentence is talents. And this plural subject requires the plural verb make. Okay, here's another one for you to try. 
In this sentence, if we eliminate the prepositional phrase of hours that employees work each month, it is clear that the subject of this sentence is the number. Since this subject is singular, it requires the singular verb has to give us the sentence the number of hours that employees work each month has increased substantially. Now compare that sentence with this one. In this case, if we eliminate the prepositional phrase of employees, it's unclear whether the subject, a number, is plural or singular. Fortunately, we have a nice rule that says the phrase a number of creates a plural subject. So the subject here is plural, which means we need the plural verb have to give us the sentence a number of employees have quit recently. So to summarize, the number of is singular and a number of is plural. Okay, here's another one for you. This question involves the collective noun committee. A collective noun is used to refer to an entire group of people, animal, or things. Some examples of collective nouns include the following. Now a collective noun almost always functions as a singular subject and therefore it requires a singular verb. In the sentence shown here, the subject committee is considered singular and as such it requires the singular verb is. Now it's important to note that there are some rare instances in which a collective noun functions as a plural subject. The rule is this. If the members of the group function as a unit, then treat the collective noun as singular. If the members of the group function individually, then treat the collective noun as plural. So in the first example, the committee members are meeting as a unit. So the committee is considered singular, which means we need the singular verb is. In this next example, the orchestra members are not functioning as a unit. Each individual member is tuning his or her instrument. As such, the orchestra is considered plural, which means we need the plural verb are and the plural pronoun there. Similarly, in this sense, the jury members are not functioning as a unit. In fact, the members are arguing. As such, the jury is considered plural, which means we need the plural verb are and the plural pronoun themselves. Now these last two sentences, although grammatically correct, are somewhat awkward. In each case, adding the word members would make each of them sound much more natural. Okay, the last issue to address in this lesson has to do with phrases and clauses that function as subjects. For example, what would you do to make this sentence correct? Well, the subject here is the gerund phrase eating vegetables. Now any time a phrase or a clause functions as the subject in a sentence, it will always be singular. So in this example, the singular subject requires the singular verb is to get eating vegetables is good for you. Similarly, in the sentence to watch and peg make gravy is an eye-opening experience, the infinitive phrase to watch and peg make gravy is the subject. Since this subject must be singular, it requires the singular verb is. In the sentence, whether the twins drive or fly to Baltimore is no one's concern, the subject is the clause, whether the twins drive or fly to Baltimore. Since the subject is a clause, it is singular, which means it requires the singular verb is. The same applies to this sentence. Here the subject is the clause, whatever you decide. Since the subject is a clause, it is singular, which means it requires the singular verb is. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that the subject and verb must agree in number. We learned that we should ignore additive phrases. We learned the rules for the number of and a number of. We learned how to handle collective nouns. And we learned how to handle phrases and clause functioning as subjects.